Hi, the lovely time in Hull. I was invited there by a fellow called Steve, who uh, runs a, a fantastic eatery uh, in Hull, and he said I should come and uh, perform to all his regulars. And so uh, I, I turned up and did this gig, uh, playing to a lot of people who had no idea what I was about, or my music, or my stories. And we had a sort of mutually confusing evening, but it was uh, <laughs> tremendously good fun. And Steve, absolutely brilliant bloke, um, and he's had like every, he's put on every artist you can imagine in Hull during his time. Uh, and when I stayed over at his house afterwards, I was told I was sleeping in the bed that Mr. Methane had once slept in. So how about that? <laughs> Uh, and if you don't know who Mr. Methane is, um, keep it that way. <laughs> I think he's the most famous bloke ever to come from Macclesfield, where I'm from. So that's another fantastic little connection. Anyway, uh, moving on from flatulism, uh, Hull. <laughs> Veering off Beverly Road, you pass a number of tanneries as you head towards the river. They stink big old brick buildings where huge drums tumble slowly over and over, and a tangible white mist of stench sits in the hollows between the walls. At the end of the street is a Jewish graveyard, disappearing into brambles, gravestones hidden in trees. A sign rising from the thicket gives the name of the road, Air Street. The hull is still fringed by industry all along, with tall concrete slabbed walls and fences. The area is known as the Bankside Gallery, and graffiti artists have coloured every suitable surface. It's a semi-formal arrangement now, and certain buildings, on, certain buildings have signs on saying things like, listed building, no art, please. Banksy left a picture here on a disused and raised drawbridge, now covered in stiff and see-through plastic sheet to protect it from the elements and the jealous. We made it to the whalebone, a pub on the verge of surviving its context. I love pubs like this, where the world that spawned them has gone, demolished, redundant, redeveloped, and suddenly they're the only remnant of a time past, decontextualised and strange, surrounded by modernity. The Baltic Fleet in Liverpool is another fine example, a sailor's pub left architecturally lost among the contemporary urban accommodation that sprouted with such vigour when the warehouses came down or our very own Peveril of the Peak in Manchester. All green glazed tiles, a two-storey city pub from another age, base out of alignment with the footprint of the huge new buildings all around, a subtle clue as to the ever-shifting flow of the city streets. Industry is on the way out here, but the whalebone persists, or perhaps even thrives, a rare bright light in this dusk, a glowing beacon of life amidst the lifeless ruined brick and graffiti sprawl of the post-war industrial hull, bombed out and rebuilt on the cheap just to get the place going again. Development is coming, further down towards the Humber. Warehouses and industry have become flats and museums, quirky bars, and the wave is slowly lifting itself upstream. There's an outlier, a single warehouse already flat, developed ahead of time by some forward-thinking Hull residents with the cash to do it and the finger on the pulse of the city. Surrounded by factories and garages, recycling centres and scrapyards, the air smells of process, but the views are of rubble and the gentle end of eras. But when the wave reaches this street, somebody stands ready to cash in. My mate bought an old mill and rented it out to artists for a while, said Steve. They bloody love a mill, artists. They do. It's like catnip to them, they just can't resist one. <laughs> the garages and scrapyards will turn into pop-up bars and little kitchens and galleries and squats, then houses, then flats and then trendy pubs. And finally, the artists and free spirits that arrived as the first colonisers will be economically and socially displaced to move further upriver. And the area will become boring again as achingly dull people evict the cultural life that drew them here, wanting to feed off that vibe without the slog of having to add to it themselves. The next 50 years were already determined for this street, and the whalebone would sit through it, an unbroken link to a past that will seem far away and mysterious. We tried another pint a couple of streets on at a big, lonely sort of place called The County. It was 9pm, and already the landlady was closing the curtains, peach and lilac patterns that matched her clothing so well that when she stood in front of them, she disappeared entirely from sight. <laughs> there were two dart boards at opposite ends of the bar, suggesting at least the historical existence of an A and a B team. Such numbers seemed hard to believe on a night like this. We took our pints of chestnut mild, tastes of nout, to the back room and watched as the landlady flitted between following the 1980s crime drama on the TV over the bar and feeding pounds into the fruit machine during the adverts. 
All around the deep picture rail were huge vintage chocolate tins, a reminder of how large Roses and Quality Street used to be before the era of austerity. So we concluded our adventure in Dive, a bar a little out of town, set up by a couple of young lads who wanted a bit of autonomy in the pub business. So many pub cows have exploitative models of tenancy that any smart youngster looking to run one has generally concluded that it's better to set up as an independent and unable to buy out the larger houses. There's been an explosion of little bars all over the country. They probably don't make any more money this way, but at least it's theirs to do with as they please, without the pub cow accountants working out exactly how much rent to chisel them for this year. It's a microcosm of the wider economy, really. Without the same career progression and security of the old jobs market, if you're in the service sector, sector and have a bit of youthful ambition, you might as well do your own thing, be like coffee shops, hairdressers or bars. There were two young women at the bar next to me towards the end of a good night out. I better go home. I have to lead a yoga session at 8am tomorrow morning, said one. Somewhat worse for wear, stumbling through the door. Good luck with that, I shouted as they left. And I meant it. They were replaced by a skinny and heavily bearded man who ordered a Guinness. He was full of opinions, but very hard to follow. Later on, Steve told me, he was a musician, you know. What did he play? Vibes. Of course. 